primary, how results will impact the race for president, plus a look at what's at stake as results come in from other states. Major airlines announce cuts to flights due to the coronavirus. We find out if the cuts will impact Boise travelers. Tree forts, local libraries, all making important decisions how they're battling the spread of the virus. We're about 30 minutes away from polls closing in several states holding primaries right now. And of course, here in Idaho, we have until 8 o'clock to vote. Yeah, there's a lot at stake tonight, especially for Democratic presidential candidates Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Our reporters are in place getting ready to bring you live coverage throughout the evening on CBS 2 News and IdahoNews.com. We start with CBS 2 Scott Logan. He's live at the place on the Boise bench where Bernie Sanders supporters will gather tonight. I am at what's called the lounge at the end of the universe just off Vista and that's where the Bernie Sanders watch party will begin in earnest later on this evening. Of course Sanders back in 2016 clobbered Hillary Clinton 78 percent to 21 percent in what was then the 2016 Democratic primary caucus. Today 20 delegates are up for grabs in what has now become the Idaho Democratic primary. Sanders' popularity in 2016 showcased the appeal of his progressive policies among the minority Democratic Party here in Idaho. Sanders' supporters are hoping that those policy will, policies will continue to appeal to the majority of Democratic voters in the state this time around as well. However, the Biden campaign is arguing that the people in the country simply want a change in the White House, not necessarily some grand policy revolution. And while Idaho is not the biggest prize uh, on this evening of politicking and voting, certainly every delegate is going to count in this primary. In Boise, Scott Logan, CBS 2 News. And on the Republican side, President Donald Trump expected to win easily tonight. However, voters will be watching to see who he could compete against in the November election. CBS 2's Trevor Fay is live at the Republican Party gathering. Trevor. Polls for Idaho's presidential primary are open today from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And what's interesting is it's not just President Trump running for the Republican nomination. William F. Weld, former governor of Massachusetts, is also running for the Republican ticket. He ran as vice president on the Libertarian Party in 2016. He's presenting himself as a voice for alienated moderates and mainstream conservatives. GOP faithful as well as curious onlookers will arrive at Legends around 7.30 tonight to watch the coverage of the vote, and President Trump is expected to win in Idaho, according to polls. Managers here tell me that they originally expected around 75 people for tonight's viewing party, but now it may be as many as 200. Later on tonight at 9 and 10 o'clock, I'll have interviews with some of those attendees. In Boise, Trevor Fay, CBS2 News. Now right off the bat today, some voters in Canyon County ran into trouble casting ballots. CBS2's Erica Lee is at the Canyon County Election Headquarters with a look at what happened. That's right, I'm at the Canyon County Elections Office. This is where at around 8 a.m. there was a coding error that made some Canyon County voting locations unable to get their tickets read. Here's what happened. I have one of the voting slips right here, and here on this code, there was an extra digit, the letter L, that made the ticket unable to be read. Fortunately, they were able to manually get the votes in order at around 8.30, and by 12 p.m., everything was fixed. Once we realized that extra digit was being added on there, we were able to get it corrected. And even before we were able to get the poll pad corrected, we were able to find a workaround where the people could just manually enter the ballot, the proper ballot code in there, and then the people could vote the correct ballot. Yet you have around two and a half more hours to cast your vote. Come, vote come after work, come after you go grocery shopping. You have until 8 p.m. Reporting live in Canyon County, Erica Lee, CBS 2 News. Now this is, of course, the first year that Democrats have held a primary instead of a caucus. In 2016, Sanders took almost 80 percent of the caucus vote. And Idaho has 20 delegates at stake tonight, meaning other voters in other states are also heading to the polls today. 
125 delegates in Michigan are at stake while we have 89 delegates in Washington. Missouri has 68 delegates up for grabs, 36 down in Mississippi and in North Dakota, 14 delegates at stake. All six states today are important, but one state is drawing a little extra attention. Michigan, I'm counting on you in a big way. On Tuesday, let's win here in Michigan. Again, 125 delegates are at stake in the state of Michigan. Polls there close in just a half an hour. Fewer than 100 delegates separate Biden and Sanders with California numbers still in flux. And neither is close to the 1,991 delegates that are needed to secure the nomination. Now, CBS will be working with our Sinclair sister stations across the country to bring you live election coverage tonight. We'll send you alerts to your smartphone when you download the CBS2 mobile app. Our reporters will also be providing live updates on the CBS2 Facebook page. Then, join us at 9 on the CW and at 10 here on CBS2 for the latest results from Idaho and from across the country. Fear of the coronavirus spreading is uh, impacting what the Democratic candidates are doing, or should I say not doing, on this very important day. Uh, we're learning that Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden are both canceling their primary night rallies in Cleveland, Ohio, just as a precaution. And continue our, our coverage of the coronavirus. Our focus here at CBS2 is to give you the facts to help you and your family stay safe. A second case of the virus has been confirmed with our neighbors in Utah. Officials say the 60 year old woman traveled outside of the US before becoming sick. Mayor McLean's office held a press conference today to specifically address the coronavirus. The mayor outlined the preparations being made. And we are also coming up with internal policies to address how we provide citizens the essential services needed in the event when and if an outbreak occurs here in the city. And then Mayor McLean recognized the concerns of our community and says she is committed to keeping residents informed. Now, you might call it a drill, but this Friday, Boise State is asking everyone to stay home and hold classes online instead. The one-day shutdown of the campus is, sure, is to ensure the health and safety of faculty and students, but it is also a live exercise to help prepare the university for any emergency that comes from disease or natural disaster. And events across the country have been canceled or postponed because of the concerns over the spread of the coronavirus. Just into our newsroom, Coachella is officially postponed until October. South by Southwest, Austin's massive music, tech and film festival. Just one example of what we're talking about. So what about here in Idaho? Well, the state's coronavirus Twitter page said today they're not recommending the cancellation of mass gatherings yet, though they say the situation is rapidly changing and measures such as cancellation or mass gatherings could be recommended in the future. But some people are still calling for one of Boise's biggest upcoming events to be canceled. CBS 2's Haley Kramer talked to Boiseans downtown to hear what they had to say. Tree Fort is a huge event for Boise, and when I talk to organizers this morning, they tell me the festival is still on. But we received several messages and comments from people who are concerned that the virus has had confirmed cases in our surrounding states of Utah, Washington, and Oregon. So I asked the question, should Tree Fort be canceled? I talked to about 20 people downtown this afternoon, some on camera, some off. Do you think that Tree Fort should be canceled with the spread of coronavirus in surrounding states? No, I don't. That's what most people told me. As for why? If we all lock ourselves in our house for the next six months, then maybe we'll get lucky and nobody will get coronavirus, but otherwise, just got to keep on living your life. I'm not going to allow the coronavirus to make you shut down your house, can't bring guests in. Stop going to the theaters, stop you with your entertainment, stop going to church, stop doing what, then, then where, where does it end? Where does it stop? I think if you're concerned about it, don't go. And if you're not concerned about it and you still want to go, you should go. Kenny Bramwell, an emergency physician at St. Luke's, says you should take precautions if you live with someone who is vulnerable to the virus. But he doesn't think canceling Tree Fort is the answer. Washing our hands, coughing into our sleeves, staying home if we're sick, 
it seems like we're talking about those as if those are new pieces of advice, when in fact we've been saying that for a long time. Tree Fort has a special section on their website dedicated to the latest coronavirus information and what they're doing to be cautious. As of now, Tree Fort will go on because they say individual risk in Idaho is low and the state has not recommended that any gatherings like this are canceled. But a few people I talked to weren't so sure. We might think we're safe, but if we pose that risk and bring people in from other states where there are confirmed instances of it, I think it's a bad idea. I think mostly it's hysteria and overblown, but I think there's a balance between economic good and societal good, and I think that erring on, erring on the side of caution is probably the best thing to do here. Tree Fort organizers tell me they are constantly updating that website as things develop. Now, if you have a ticket and you're concerned about the coronavirus or you feel like you may be sick, you can go on that site and find information about how to get a refund up until the first day of the festival. We have that for you on our website, IdahoNews.com as well. Live in Boise, Haley Kramer, CBS 2 News. Now here's how local libraries are taking action on the coronavirus. In Nampa, library staff are putting up signs encouraging people to wash their hands. They also uh, are following a detailed cleaning schedule and there are hand sanitizers and wipes and gloves available as well. Similar precautions being taken at libraries in Meridian. Meridian patrons and staff also being asked if they're sick to just stay home. One other thing, the library has created a COVID-19 information page that can be found on its website. And the coronavirus is also changing popular shows that you watch right here on CBS2. Right now, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune are recording shows without a studio audience. Now those shows are recorded months in advance, so it'll be a while before you actually notice the difference on TV. Also, uh, CBS announced it is suspending production of Amazing Race. And we'll continue to follow the spread of the coronavirus. For the latest updates, watch CBS2 News and keep an eye out for our website to make sure to follow us as well on our Facebook and Twitter. Last week, deadly tornadoes ripped through parts of Tennessee. In addition to taking lives, the storm left massive devastation. Through the major disaster declaration, FEMA is expected to provide at least three declared counties aid. But these communities need all the help they can get to rebuild what they've lost. That's why we're joining in the effort to help Nashville in their tornado recovery efforts. CBS2 is teaming up with the Salvation Army to raise relief funds. The Salvation Army is ready to serve those in need. And with your support, we can stay on the front lines to help those affected. Not only do we help with food and, and snacks and water, we also help with emotional and spiritual care. So if anybody needs a prayer or a shoulder to, to cry on or a handshake or a hug, we're always there as well. We can't do what we do without your support. Um, I, I, it, but And if you can give, it's, again, go to helpsalvationarmy.org or call 1-800-SAL-ARMY. And um, we will do the most good with what you give to us um, th through, through this disaster. Now, all money raised through this fund will be used throughout the impacted areas of Central Tennessee to provide recovery and relief assistance. And our parent company, Sinclair Broadcast Group, will match up to $25,000 in donations. Find out how to donate. Just head on over to our website, IdahoNews.com. There's a banner at the top of the website. You can't miss it. Still to come on CBS 2 News at 530, no one grants wishes like Make-A-Wish Idaho. How you can help make those wishes come true. But first, a new primary health clinic breaking ground in CUNA. When you can expect this facility to be up and running. Today's market report is sponsored by your local Edward Jones Financial Advisors. With more than 50 offices in the Treasure Valley, Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Getting answers takes experience. It takes time and dedication. That's why CBS2 has two reporters covering the Idaho legislature. 
a daily live blog on IdahoNews.com so you know what's happening. If it happens here, you'll see it on CBS2 and IdahoNews.com. Comings and goings, Primary Health Medical Group broke ground today on its first clinic in CUNA. It will be located near DMB Supply at the southeast corner of Deer Flat and Meridian Roads. The clinic will have 11 exam rooms, an x-ray suite, trauma room, lab and procedure room. It's scheduled to open this fall. In Meridian, firefighters are opening Station 6 later this week. It's at 1435 West Overland Road. It's Meridian's first new fire station in more than a decade. The building will be staffed with an engine company and a battalion chief. The grand opening is this Thursday, the 12th. The uncoupling ceremony at 11 o'clock in the morning. The open house goes until 3 in the afternoon. In Canyon County, developers are eyeing an area on Middleton Road between Linder Road and Idaho 26. 48 acres will be rezoned to develop 175 homes in the Masterson Ranch subdivision. Follow development and construction on air and online every Tuesday. We'll let you know what's coming and going. Well, no one grants wishes like Make-A-Wish Idaho, but it takes a lot of help from people just like you. Join us tomorrow, March 11th, for our Wishes in Flight Telethon by donating your unused airline miles or even donating money online. You can make wishes come true for children battling critical illnesses. Make-A-Wish is looking for whatever you can give. We'll be taking donations from the first newscast of the morning starting at 5 a.m. until the end of our last newscast at night at 10.30. Hi everybody, let's get right to the heart of the matter and that is that tomorrow is going to be a very nice day in the Treasure Valley. We start out at 34 degrees in the morning, but high temperatures tomorrow afternoon are going to be even milder than it's going to end up being today. We should be topping out tomorrow at about 61 degrees. So outside right now, we're currently in the mid 50s. So temperatures just keep going up and up by about two or three degrees each day. However, there is a dry front that's going to work its way into the Treasure Valley tomorrow evening. As it does, it'll help the cool temperatures down just a little bit on Thursday, but you're really not going to notice much more than that. The overall driving feature in the atmosphere right now is still just as flow, nice and mild coming in from the west northwest, and that is what's going to give us mostly sunny skies, occasional high thin cirrus clouds, and what we're going to be watching is this feature developing up here in the Gulf of Alaska. Models again today are indicating that a front is going to be forming up there in the Gulf of Alaska and we'll call it a developing weekend storm and it's expected to move in here on Saturday and Sunday and as it does it's going to pull in some colder air in fact chillier air than we have seen in weeks past so rain showers are expected here in the Treasure Valley on Saturday with some mountain snow and we might even get a few hit and miss rain snow showers in the Treasure Valley on Saturday and uh, excuse me on rain showers on Saturday rain snow showers on Sunday. So for the next few days plenty of sunshine temperatures cool down just a little bit on Thursday back down into the mid 50s but Friday we re rebound to 60 degrees and then rain showers expected on Saturday a little rain snow mix on Sunday and then dry but cool in fact it's going to be a little bit on the chilly side commencing Sunday Monday and Tuesday. Up in the mountains we'll see mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies through Friday. Expect to see snow on Saturday. Still too early to tell how low the snow levels will be. And then on Sunday snow showers will be affecting the mountains. And that's definitely good news. Should help the snowpack a little bit, but at this point snowpack levels are still kind of in the depleting stage. All right, Roland, thank you. you Still to come on CBS 2 News, video games aren't just for kids anymore. Why seniors are taken over. And here's our chime in photo of the day. This was taken by Kirsten Dowling of last night's supermoon, also known as the warm moon. Thanks for sending this in, Kirsten. To submit your photos, head on over to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. Is that like an alias or something? <laughs> here's your primetime lineup here tonight on CBS 2.
Coming up tonight on CBS 2 News at 10, voting in the primary is well underway with just a couple hours left. Coming up at 10, we'll bring you a full recap and the results of today's election. Solutions for Seniors is sponsored by Medigold. In tonight's Solutions for Seniors, teenage boys are the most avid video game players in the U.S. No surprise there. But they're being joined by another group, grandparents. There are 51 million senior gamers, up from just 40 million three years ago. Older gamers embracing video games for a couple of reasons. According to AARP, they can offer a sense of online community and a way to spend quality time with their grandchildren. Not only is the number of senior gamers growing, so is the money they spend. People over 50 spend $3.5 billion on video games and accessories between January and June of this last year. Yes, old folks have the bucks. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> well, our next newscast is tonight at 9 o'clock on The CW. And don't forget to follow us on the CBS2 Facebook page and IdahoNews.com for election results as they come in tonight. We'll see you at 10. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.